I'm struggling to finish my video that you're gonna watch right now. So I wanna say something here at the beginning. If anybody wonders, why would you do this kind of test? Well, behind me is a 260 kilowatt hour power wall, let's say. And I wanna know what could happen, what can happen, and what the result of those happenings are. That's the reason for this test. And it's just fun. So without further ado, let's get going on with it. So hello everyone. Uh, been a while since I made a video, been busy with different things. But today we're gonna be talking is, is the title of this video about lithium ion phosphate cells safety. Now these cells are 120 amp hours each they were used cells that I bought from China. So, and I used them in that original uh, battery packs that I had in a previous home. So, we have four. They've been used as a 12 volt battery and unfortunately they are super dead. Now let me demonstrate. So we'll see if any of them can be recovered and then used for the safety test purposes here in a short while. Okay, so let's look at what do we have for the voltages on this battery. First one, we have amazing 1.09 volts. Second one, 0 0.86 volts. Amazing. And then we have 3 volts. That actually seems like a good one. And then we have 2.7 volts, okay? Now we are going to charge these batteries. So the next piece of device that we're going to use to charge these batteries, of course I have to disassemble it and I'm gonna charge them in parallel, is this Coco Cater power supply. Now amazing thing about this supply is it will give you 60 amps a 30 volt DC. In this, my case, we'll be using the 3.6 volts at 60 amps. So we should be able to ch charge these four batteries in about, I wanna say eight hours if they want to recharge. Okay, so I believe we will have at least two that we can use for safety and safety demonstration purposes. So here is the charging contraption I come up with to charge or to attempt to charge these old cells. In previous segment, we saw the voltages on those cells. So let's see what this unit can do when it comes to the output. First, we have to adjust the voltage. We will go down to about three and a half volts for the starters. I don't think we need to be anywhere higher than that. So here it is. And then current. We're going to adjust the current to 60 amps. And let's see if this whole thing blows up in my face once I press the output. Nope. It's humming, it's making a noise. So what we're going to do is, there you go. I'll lower the amperage to about 50 amps. Since these two right cells were the worst at about one volt, I'm going to keep an eye on them during the day, make sure they don't get swollen up or blow up in my face. Right now everything looks fine. I really hate Duracell batteries. They always suck, they always leak out. Man, I haven't used this in about seven months, eight months, and then it just leaks out like this. All right, try something else. I replaced the batteries in this little voltmeter over here. The fans have finally come on on the power supply. So we are doing about 52 amps. So according to the flute, 3.12 volts, 52 amps. Maybe we are one more hour away from this being finished, but we can see the light at the end of this tunnel. It's been almost, well, nine hours now since we started charging at 55 amps. So, 
soon we'll be where we need to be. Now, we're gonna test one of these cells with this little test device. However, in the nine hours, what I noticed, and I'll probably try to show it later, is that it's swollen up a little bit. The two bad cells on the end that were at one volt, they have just swollen up. But the good cell, first two good cells, they did not swell at all. I mean, it's hard to show with a camera, and I'm trying, but you just have to trust me on that one. So what we're gonna do next, we are going to discharge one of these bad cells and see if we can pull out the full capacity after it has been sitting at one volt for past, I wanna say nine months. So I'm down to six and a half amps of charging. Now, when we look at the voltage according to this, it says 3.66. And when I look at it with this little device right here, it says about 3.65. So what I'm going to do right now is, I'm going to disconnect everything and see what we have on the individual cells. when you put them over here in front of camera let's put number three a little bit more space than what you have between these two right and then let's put the last one okay put the last one right here oh my gosh the last one once i sit it properly down yeah, it's a whole lot more swollen than the rest of them. But that's to be suspected when the cell was sitting on such a low state of charge, low voltage, one volt for a long period of time. I suspect there's some kind of a damage to this cell. So we are going to take this last cell and we will do a discharge test to this old device that I have over here to discharge cells. All right, so the original capacity, used capacity, is 120 amp hours. I bought them used from China a long time ago. There's videos on these cells on my channel. Go check those out if you want to. All right, so let's have the test start. So let's see what happens. All right, it's starting. 24 amps pulling. Let's see what's the capacity of this battery. So one hour exactly has passed since the start of this test. Voltage at this point is 3.327 volts. We pulled 24.4 amp hours as expected. Test continues. So here we are at the two hour mark. Nothing impressive so far. 48 amp hours as suspected, judging by a constant current draw. However, the voltage is at 3.29 volts. So from a previous segment to this segment, and just judging by the voltage, what do you guys think? Are we going to make it to 120 amp hours? Stop the video, post it down in the comment. Let's see what we get. We are near the end of the test. 118, maybe we'll pull 119 amp hours. Which is amazing, guys. Here it is, right there. Done. Says test is complete. And if this device to be is to be believed, it pulled 118 amp hours in four hours and 54 minutes. 24 amp load so amazing doesn't even look as swollen as it was at the beginning of the test so this next video is a test of over voltage issue meaning maybe your charge controller went to crap and your BMS took crap too at the same time and now you're charging your cells with a really high voltage.
So this is this test scenario. However, nothing happened in this test. Even when I increased the voltage to 10, 10 volts and charge it there for about, I want to say 10 minutes. Uh, I have increased the voltage from 5.3 to 10 volts for well over one hour with nothing happening except swelling up on top around the terminals as you can see right now in this portion of the video. So combined and look at the timestamps at the beginning of this segment, at the, in the end of this segment, about an hour and 15 minutes. Nothing really happened. The temperature increased to maybe 87, 88 degrees Fahrenheit on these cells from an ambient temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. So I decided to stop the test and continue with something else. So we are waiting for the uh, cell to discharge a little bit and we will attempt to get a slow motion shot of kinetic energy test. Kinetic energy test. Well, lithium iron phosphate does burn though. After kinetic energy test, it just burns. We'll see how long it burns for. Hopefully I got that in a slow motion. That was overcharged lithium iron phosphate cell. It received a good old 308. Well, it has been about an hour and a half since I did a kinetic energy test. Like I didn't say that enough. And touching it, still very, very hot to a touch. Even now, as I said, hour and a half later, I want to say that possibly there's some remnants of some kind of a chemical process still going on inside. However, this is conclusion of this test. So if you guys have anything else you would like me to test, maybe I can try it in the near future. We got three more cells left to play with. Later.